It is the Lord. It's not from the Lord. It is the Lord. Because He is the light of life. That which is light is the Lord. And if you have been learning facts, then, then you have not yet really come to light the way you need to. So you're not saved. So you're not loved. Didn't say maybe you're not even right exactly where you're supposed to be at this time. Didn't say that, you know, God, you know, is against you. Just said that in reality, you may have not really seen life yet. You may have experienced inspiration. But inspiration is not the revelation of life. Of life. Life is. This would explain why somebody would not be able to divide life from darkness. <clears throat> Wait a minute. Would this explain why somebody couldn't divide life from darkness? Because in the natural, which is only a shadow, it is very clear. This is darkness, that's light. Or this is light, and that's darkness. And I ain't going over there. You know. And even little children can tell you, I can turn them to the Lord. <laughs> um, how is it that the shining reality is mixed in with darkness so that the two are not divided, when God divided from the very beginning, light and darkness? How is that? There's only one explanation. There can only be one explanation. Light has not yet really been seen. Because when light is seen, life is there, and when life is there, it begins to produce. Just a fact. Not a condemnation fact. Not a, oh, you are hopeless fact. Not a, oh my God, everything I've done is in vain fact. <laughs> you know, I can't even think of all that you might conclude from it. Uh, maybe just the fact that if that's the truth, uh, thank God I just heard it and I'm ready to move on. Because God divided the light of the darkness. And there is a clear cut, clear, clear cut. This is darkness. Okay. Now what is darkness? You see what I mean? I mean, in the natural we say it's dark spots. But it's not as it's not as it's not defined as such in the spirit or in the or in God's understanding. How about that? In God's understanding. Um, darkness is sense realm reality. So what we have to do is equate standing in a, a place that's really, really dark. And I don't know about you, but for most people, dark means kind of scary. Light means safe. I know when I was growing up, oh man, I hated night coming on. I hated it coming on because I knew what it meant. You know, and I, I laid there at night many a times, hoping for the day because when the day came, calm, the calm began to come. Not so great at all, but greater than the night. And uh, so, what you have to do is equate darkness, as we know it in the natural, with anything that is sensual. And if you equate that and you make the transition clear, then you will say, oh, this is darkness. And when it comes by the Spirit, and it is the Spirit of the Lord, this is light. See what I mean? That's the truth. That's the greater truth than anything you find with your senses. So it would, it would make sense for us to set about to approach things from God's approach. That's the important thing. What is God's view? And as we begin to find it and agree with it and flow with it, then all the things that we have yet to even touch on are yours. You don't work it up. You don't do it. You don't strive for it. You let. You let this mind be. You let, you know, so many scriptures to talk about it. Just let it be. And it is. Because you, you let it because it is. 
And if there's a room full of treasure and the light's out, and God says, I've given you all this, and you go, big deal, because you can't see nothing. As the lights are turned on in different sections, you go, whoa, 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 cool. You know. Uh, I think that Christianity is dull to most people because they ain't got a clue what Christianity is. <laughs> I, mean, I, I believe that. I believe that they have got a clue to the great churches that we have that are located where? That's why it says that. And that's because they're going down here and they're living in the sense realm. They're trying to get God to do in the sense realm what is only done in some cases in the spirit realm. They're confused. Okay, so the life is all important to us. The life that is in the Word would cause a person to seek light. Now, in reality, you're seeking light, but light is the vehicle through which you see what is that which, according to God, just is. Life will be the vehicle. But life, or life, life is not first found in you. Not first. Life is not first found in you. Life was first found in the Word. In Him was life, not in you. In Him. And once again, where are you located? message of 
life, you hear that, that there is this one who in the heart of the Father is the same. And you desire life. And so what would one do out here in an effort to give life? They would pursue different avenues, involve themselves in different things, uh, do whatever they could to get this life that is in him was life. That would be that would be their understanding. And they would set goals around that and priorities around that. Now, let's take somebody else out over here that is a carnal believer. He don't want that. He ain't after that. He ain't pursuing that. He, he can care less. He's saved. All this believers here, all the, not the carnal believer, but the other believers striving, has not earned him life. He may look over here at the carnal believer and go, you know, at times I see God more in you than I see him in me. And not understand why. Because to to separate yourself from this, complete the, the logos of God, the one that is the same in the heart of the Father, and never change it. To separate yourself from that and to seek that apart from the same is fruitless, isn't it? It's totally fruitless. Could anybody ever, through any effort, get this life? over him into them. No. It's not possible. Uh, but God has made a way where this life can be in you, but not in no way, in no manner, the method that we have chosen. In no way can our method, which is a method based on me seeking this, back over here in me. I'm separate, I'm me, he's him, and I'm going to get it. My method will include, and you can, you can choose any number of things, but the real core part of the method is, it's based on separateness. You see what I'm saying? It's based on separateness. It is totally based on, and that is our, not God's method. Because God's method will be based on union. And it will never change. Because there is a union between the Father, and I uh, overlap the circles of the Father and the Word. There is a union whereby they are called one, but, you know, put the Holy Spirit in it, three, in one. But they are not just three. There are three that are one. They never work independently of one another. They have different, uh, if you will, ministries and aspects. Never independent. The Father sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to glorify the Father. The Holy Spirit will not speak of Himself, but lifts up Jesus. That's called one. Oh, you don't understand that fully, you may, you may think you do, but you don't, because I don't. I'm just here. Desire. Not even see. But I know that much. <laughs> At least make that statement. They do not, the, the oneness is so powerfully strong that he cannot speak of himself because he doesn't think of himself. He thinks of he lifting up the sun. The sun came and he lifts up who? The words that I do not my own. The words that I speak do not my own. And there is this the Holy Spirit who was sent by the Father.
And there is, they're not one just by virtue of some union, because there was never a, uh, when I say union, your concept of union, we have the word written here, your concept is fusion, fusion, fusing two together. There was never any fusion that took place here on the union. They were never separate. So there is no fusion. Where do we get fusion from? We get fusion from a concept of separateness. All right. Our concept of separateness. I'm going to write that down. Concept of separateness. Um, that's the word I say. This concept is based on the fall. It's based on the fall. It's not based on. Uh, that which is from the beginning is based on the fall. Okay, verse 1. In the beginning was the word. Word with God. No, no, no. Word was there. with in fellowship. So we got God and the word. What else you got? Nothing, just in. Okay. The same was in the beginning with God. Out from that comes all things were created. But this, before there was a created earth, and then a fall on the created earth, there was this, this union. Jesus prays in John 17, Father, I've finished the work, I've declared you. I've lived out the oneness, I pray that they'll be one even as we are one. We don't even, you know what I mean? Even, the way we approach the truth is from the wrong. Thing. We're not even coming from the right angle. How can you comprehend it coming from that? Jesus is saying, I pray that they'll have this oneness, this union that we had before the foundation of the world. Not a fusion, but a union. It's powerful truth. It's powerful. Because you don't have to run back through all things that were created and don't die, but literally work your way back. You simply find yourself in the beginning before you even began. Because you began there in the heart of the Father who placed you in His Son. That's where you began. Uh -huh. The fusion concept, uh, even though you think in terms of the fusion concept, that still gives, no matter how you relate to it, there's still a separateness. Because there's no two matter, matter uh, no, no matter how you fuse two things together, there are two th things that are fused together. And, and you know, obviously, there is a certain amount of truth that had to relate back. But I'm trying to deal with you not from that angle, because when you get into vine and branches and how you do get this live in you, but once again, it's a different thing than our method. The method is different. God's method is different than our method. God's approach is different than our approach. It is not the same. And anybody that holds to this method, anybody is spinning their wheels. They are ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are having a form, form, built around our method of godliness. But, what's the scripture saying? But they deny the power. And the power is through the cross. The power of God is the cross. And through that, now we don't comprehend just a fall and a cross that saved us. Back in Genesis, before the fall, man said, man was a type of, of us. Man said, well actually man, man at that point was a type of, of Jesus. The, the, the first man was the picture of Christ, that which was to come. And he said, oh, that I had a bride, someone that could fit 
There was no sin. How did God form that? God put man to sleep. And the word asleep there is, it, I've searched it out in the Hebrew, it means it is so close to death that his eyes dead. A great sleep fell upon him, and God opened his side. He wounded him. He, he cut open his side. From it, he took bone of his bone. He didn't, he didn't take more filthy dirt, shove it in there and mix it up with him, and form something. He literally went inside of him, inside of him, and took the depths of what he was out, and from that formed her. And presented and he said, What sin had she committed that caused the death, the pain, the scar, the wounding of him? No sin, for no sin had yet been committed. By what sin had he committed? None. What what action? There was no action of sin. This is God's method. Not our method. This is God's method. Out from the very being of that one comes all that will be of him. And when we say of, that's kind of the difference between with God and with God. Remember? This ain't just, well, I'm with you, Lord. This is, I am of you, bone of your bone. Uh, that is not fusion. That's union. That's not fusion. Because before there was sin, there was this concept of in and out of. And it begins with what is in before it can ever be formed. Out. And that you were never in his mind located out, but in. Sin has caused this, the concept of severance. Sin is the great uh, divider of us and God. Redemption brings us back and bridges the gap, yes. But I'm not trying to center on that part. But once that is done, and all of that is forgotten, and there is a new creation. It is, it is not a remembering of the old anymore. Old things, if, if any man, if any man, any, who, any man, any be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new species. Old is passed away, not old is forgotten, because now you have a new life. No, old is passed away. And the former things they will remember no more. It is a it is as if the word justified brings up. As if you never sinned. It's not that you sin. Now there are other aspects of redemption that have this concept, but, but justification says it is as if you never sinned. Now that's a big leap from being a forgiven sinner. Big leap. And to, to uh, I remember being challenged, going, how can this be? You know, I mean, you know, born in sin, you live the life of sin, you are the chiefest of sinners, you go, you know, I'm having a hard time not comprehending me as this comprehending me as bone of his bone before there was sin. That there is, I was in the beginning and that's where God begins the process for me. In reality. I mean as far as the eternal plan of God and really entering into where God's going. It just, it's, it's mind-boggling but, it, but at some juncture you leave your method and you must embrace his concepts. And his concept is not you the way you are 
his concept, and if you want to take it to its most simplified form, is the Father and the Word, his complete thought concept, and you somewhere in there, receiving, embracing all, all, the all that is and no longer, no longer, no longer coming from, and you, but you see this all the time, so I believe this, I hear this, I embrace this, but you'll find yourself back out here seeking something that you are already in union with, you'll find it tomorrow or the next day. You will find yourself thinking in terms of, oh, you know, I'm me, I'm, I've got to get my thing together, I've got to, oh, I see my failings, it's always me, my, me. I. But you are hid in Christ from before the foundation of the world. Before Adam sinned, before you were ever created, you must find yourself in the beginning. Okay? Got like two creations going on at the same time. One of them is the mind of God who calls those things which are not as though they are. And then the creation which we think we see ourselves in down here, which we're trying to relate to rather than the creation that God is thinking of in the beginning, the creation that He has created, the new creation. That's exactly right. That's right. Maybe I should address this, this concept of how God is and perceives based on the scripture there in uh, Romans 4 where it says that God called it those things which be not as though they were. Uh, <laughs> the, the, way that, the way the Holy Spirit first began to show me how the Father was and how things were settled without being settled. We, you know, we call something settled, don't you? Yeah. We gotta have peace, we gotta have everybody happy. That's been settled. Okay. Well, with God, not always as evident as that, but um, the Holy Spirit used the situation of uh, Abraham who was told to go offer up Isaac. And, you know, and I've shared a little bit of this, this part that I'm fixing to show, I've shared this with you before, about how, you know, if you see the, 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 the movies, you know, where God tells Abraham that he falls on the ground and goes, ah, oh, no! And uh, we, we really, I mean, he might have done that, but we don't have any scriptural testimony to that fact. And he said, and I, this was just powerful. I mean, uh, the, the way the Holy Spirit began to present to me, I guess, well, it's, it's powerful the way it is in the Word. I just began to see it as it is. He said, go offer up your son, but don't do it here. Go to Mount Moriah, which is a three days journey. I thought, how cruel can you get? You know, man, three days. And it was as if I began to be there. And I, I give the examples of that. Your experience doesn't have to be mine. But I feel the Spirit of God teaches me many times as if I am there but unseen. Or maybe even one of the ones that are there. And it's as if Abraham is riding along slowly going, making the journey. Isaac is on his mule or whatever, and I'm kind of watching this thing as it goes. And they speak every once in a while. But there is a different approach from the father toward his son. For three days, it's totally different than it's ever been before because in his heart, he is already offered it his son. He wouldn't even be making the journey if he had. He's already dead from before the trip. Yeah. He's already settled. Just because a period of time has passed and a physical manifestation time comes. That doesn't mean anything. All that is is the manifesting of what was before 
And the scripture says that Jesus was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. It was all set. It's all totally settled in the heart of the Father. And so we go, well, I don't understand. How can it be settled? And how can I be in Christ already when I don't even exist and all this stuff? You did exist. You read the Psalms. You existed. You were there. You were there in the beginning. You were in, what is it? What, what is it, Psalm 139? I'm not sure. So I'm, I know, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Okay, listen to Psalm 139. I believe, now this is this is this is my belief. So you don't have to believe that. I believe Psalm 139 is a psalm of the Son, Jesus Christ, to the Father. That's what I believe. Let's start at verse uh, 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, and by the way, these scriptures are quoted uh, in the New Testament slightly different, but these scriptures are quoted in relationship to Christ and his dead and good resurrection. I don't know. Probably coincidence. Uh, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. And when I say the Son, I mean the Son of Man. I don't mean the Son of God. It was, I mean the one who knew what was going to take place even before it started. Before, in the beginning. He knew it in the beginning. So, this is all settled as far as they're concerned. It's called the determinate counsel of God in the book of Acts. First, second chapter. First or second chapter. Even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light around me. Day the darkness hideth not from me, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light will hold the light to thee. That would make sense to somebody who is not ruled by sense realm because if you're if everything is light around you you're walking in it because it's a faith walk and if everything around you is darkness it makes absolutely no difference the difference is only to us who walk in darkness or in the sense realm uh, and things were going so good you see what i'm saying i mean darkness and light but Jesus walked down here. He didn't go, oh, you know, it's up and down and everything. You know, yes, he went through trials. Yes, his soul. But ultimately, he always, when it came down to what governs, it didn't make any difference. His soul was his soul, so his soul got down. But when it came down to the government, his spirit ruled, and ultimately, it didn't make any difference. If you're a soul person, you, you can say, yeah, it did, but look at you. No, no. If you're a spirit person, you know, even if it goes a bit for a while, it doesn't make any difference. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed, and I love this, my inward parts. Is the way it For thou hast possessed my inward parts. Who is this one that is possessed all the way from the inside out? The Son of Man. This is the new, this is ultimately to be the new man. New. Not old patched up, old fused into. New. All together new. New Jerusalem that doesn't go up and comes down. We always want to go up. Rapture me out of this. New Jerusalem going to come down out of heaven to the earth. It is from. You are from. You don't feel like you're from, but you are. Because you're born again. You are you were in the beginning, in the heart of God. You are there. And there is no other viewpoint that he has. Every day, every moment, every year, every century. 
it is the same. There's one thing in the heart of the Father. This one that we're reading about now of who we are never changes his viewpoint. We change because the toy blocks get set in a different order that throws us off. It doesn't change anything to him. We don't like shuffling the deck. It's just cards. No matter what order you put them in, it's still the deck of cards. That's the way it is. Kind of the way he approaches it. We've got our little method. We've got our little want to. So we got our little this and that. And, and so we are always in confusion. Not all of I mean, you know, on a regular basis, we are confronted with confusion because our method is separate. It is a concept of separateness that his method is a method of union, not by fusion, but by that which is in the heart of the Father one who says, you are the total thought and concept, and when he throws his arms around Jesus, you're in him, and you feel those arms, and you feel it, you're being hugged up to the Father in Jesus' place. Oh, you know, he don't have to go, and Randy, here's so special do. You don't have to have that. In fact, because you don't have a concept of separateness, you not only don't have to have it, you'd rather not hear that. You'd rather just kind of hear it. Really, it's a wonderful, beautiful reality that serves you well when the cross becomes your hope. And you have no hope in yourself. Separate is real nice when you're very hot to death. I'm better than everybody else. I'm good. And you're not. You know? get to the right place, you'll know it. That's, you, know, you can't teach somebody this. You just say, when you get to the right place, you'll know it. You'll know it. <clears throat> For thou hast possessed my inward parts. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made as he fused parts of every part. For he'd never been a man before. When did he view this? Before the foundation of the world. In the beginning. That's the beginning. The beginning is not creation. That's the beginning. The plan of God. You and your son. <coughs> Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit began to Conceived this plan, and Jesus, as it were, began to behold himself. Because, like Abraham, three days before, it's done. All's left is the manifested. I mean, ain't nothing gonna stop this, baby. You know, uh, it's uh, it's like an arrow that has left the bow. That's it. It's just a matter of hitting down. It's done. I'm not, you know, well, where is it going to land? When is it going to land? That one example, wood. Just hang on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to land because it left the love. Even so, it's done. The plan is predestined. The arrow will land. The question is with us. Are we going to believe? Are we going to believe into it? Well, scripturally, check it out. It doesn't even say just believe in it. Or believe at it. Just believe into it. Really? Powerful, powerful truth about not just believing at something or, or there is something that you can kind of lay your faith on it like this, but you believe into it because you are it. Uh huh, Mary? You're talking about where the arrow will land? Uh huh. Um, one time I was thinking about what the
So, if you will, you know, leave your existence, leave creation, leave everything, go back with God, where there's only God, and you can sit down, listen to the counsel of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and listen as they conceive the plan. And as they do, you see it, you know, when things start, you see it with Adam, you know, not dealing with sin to cause a wound to break forth. It had nothing to do with sin. That was going to happen anyway. But since there was sin, might as well die for that too. That was just included. But that death was going to take place because it had to to be part bone of his bone. There had to be a wound in it. There had to be, because it was planned from the beginning that it would be union, one with. It would be of our same substance. So they began to discuss the plan. And, and you see, you see, uh, you see it develop as they conclude that there will have to be a dying and a giving of myself and, and a forming, as it were, a uh, go into the depths of, of, you know, to bring forth the heights. The, the principles of God are, you know, loss equals gain and, and, and uh, giving equals receiving. And it's all the opposite of, of flesh. It's the concept of separateness. It, is, it is runs contrary to the world. It is not our way of thinking. But he, he understands the very depths. Jesus went to the very depths raised their kinds. We short, we cut short the dealing of God. Paul said, oh, man, let the sufferings continue that I may experience a better resurrection. See, we go, oh, we, we pray away. We, get me out of this. We don't want, oh, no. I mean, everything is centered on a separate person to help me and my flesh. Preserve my flesh. But Jesus' understanding you don't even have to understand necessarily a cross or being put in, uh, being, you know, going down to hell for three days or whatever. Or what, you know. Something happened during those three days. You know. And because the principle is that you don't have to understand the placements. And the, you understand. If you've got to go, to, if you want the very highest, you've got to go to the very depth. It's the principle. Then you then you can work out the, the particulars. But if you don't live by principle, you live by stumbling and fooling around and trying to figure out, and, you know, there's like a clock that doesn't run right twice a day. So at least twice a year you hit something that is of God and you try to duplicate what you did, not realizing you just stumbled across the time when the releasing or something because somebody else did something. You never know. So so here there are there's nobody else and you're sitting there listening to them and you see him and, and you see Jesus gaze at this many membered body that he will forever throughout all of eternity be from now on. Irreversible. He is a man. And his members are you and me. And he sees it not through sin, not through you, not through the devil. He knows the devil ain't going to be around forever. The devil's not that big a deal to him. He's big deal to you. You get him in him, and in him is no darkness at all. And there's a, you know, there's a protection. There's a, there's a, an authority. There's a, there's all kind of stuff. Sword, shield. You know, go it in with the word of God. The word. That was right there at the beginning. That's offense. But we take the word as something. No, you can't bother me, Jesus. Redeem me. You know, we're holding this little bit of butter. You go there with the word. Hey, I am bone of his bone. One with. There is, I don't know where you're coming from, Jack, but I don't belong to you and never have. And in light of this, it's true. See what I'm saying? I mean, I understand it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a point across. And I had to receive this point when I did. Boom! It was like everything started to open. It was a whole new world for me. Just, just was amazing. I mean, God just 
was able to start talking to me now on his level. Instead of my little redemptive separate, he's helped me the whole level. You know what I mean? He started coming through. He started coming. So I'm sitting down here. I want to talk to you now. Let me tell you. Let me start explaining my word to you. And you go, whoa. You know, when he can take you like this. And you go, no way. Romans, the whole book actually makes sense and flows. Galatians, actually, you can read it through and go, before I could. I guarantee you. I'm like, what? Why did you do that? You no, know, I thought I was following it. No, I'm not. So you got to pull yourself back to the beginning. <laughs> Place yourself there, and if you do, then you begin to hear the counsels of God. For thou hast possessed my inward parts. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Remember Adam awakening out of his death and finding a bride. Do you think he felt soreness? He was human, he had a human body. I think he felt soreness think he had a scar? I think he had a scar. But I think that there was something before him that was so beautiful and so satisfying that the remembrance of this would soon fade. Thou art, I am fearfully, as he looked at his body, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hidden from thee. When I was made in secret and intricately wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, by getting it, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unformed. How could you see it? It wasn't formed yet. I in the beginning he saw it. It was settled, done. He saw it. He sees it yet. This is what he sees. When it, the manifestation will mean that, not that much to the Father. The arrow's left the bow. As far as he's concerned, it will matter. And it will. So, he's still in the beginning. He didn't get, he doesn't get all down here in time. He's the God of, he is eternal. Not all down here in time going, ooh. You know what I mean? I mean, it's settled. Once it's, you know, once it's settled in his heart, it's settled. He's on the way, you know, taking it night or seeing it, you know. The principle is there. It's already done. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unformed. And in thy book all my memories Every one of them. Not by fusion, but by unity. Which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. You, you want to get formed up over here and then present yourself to God. Ain't going to work, ain't going to work. You must be formed in Christ and you are formed. And it doesn't matter if they're forming in the way you think, because that's what I know what you think when I said that. I'm talking about formed in the heart of the mind. That's what I'm talking about, because that's said and that's done. And that will produce any forming that you're all interested in. But once you get in there, you're hit. That doesn't, that's it. Who cares? It's, I am complete in him. And everybody in the world can come on going, you don't want to pray for me. You can go, that's because you're not looking at you tonight. Amen? Well, I seem to try to get critical than I the way I do. But the Bible is not hypocritical. I will stand on the word heaven and earth will pass away, including what you call hypocritical, but the word will not fail. And because I'm in the word, this word. I'm not in heaven yet, but I'm in the Word. Right there in the beginning. Right there when we all discussed all this and didn't include you, just mentioned God, and just mentioned the Word and talked, guess what? Now I can be revealed. You and I were there all alone. You and I were there all alone. 
just didn't mention it because we didn't want to get you all wrapped up in stuff. We want you to see it as it was before you ever existed. Now, guess what? You existed in the heart of God. How precious are our thoughts unto me, O God? How great is the sum of them? If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with them. Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. It is so the, the foolish, the wicked, the wise can't, can't lay hold of it. Only because they are foolish, meaning something simple. It doesn't, doesn't matter if you apply the word foolish, wise, or base, or noble. It doesn't, doesn't matter what each of those is an identification <coughs> of a separate identity other than this. Do you understand what I'm saying by that? It is a, it's, it's not, the, it's not the word identification. You could call him Ibisnor. <laughs> that is, he's an Ibisnor. And he's not this. You know, and you could find a beautiful word, a Froswin. But he's not this. He's a Froswin. Don't matter. Ibisnor, Froswin. It doesn't matter. Anything that you choose, but we we get all into the word foolish or base or noble or wise or we get into all of that. And we're trying to, and, and most of us spend the first half of our Christian existence trying to be moved from foolish to wise, only to find out it's still a designation of many. But in Christ, and see, this is what he says, but he chooses the base things and the foolish things and this and that because they embrace this because they don't have nothing to offer. And so they go, oh, and so they get hit in Christ. He says, oh, God, are you in Christ? So that he is made unto you wisdom. See, that's not a personal designation, no. It's not a personal designation. He is made to you wisdom. He don't give you personal designations in, the, in, in what I call the negative sense. You know, I mean, you may be sitting there off way down, way down the line of this truth and going, well, where's me and all this? You're there, you know, good grief. I tell you what, you know, if you're wondering more about that than you are this, you're going to really have some problems. You get this down, you will be what you are supposed to be. Fine. The best that you're supposed to be, you'll find it be able to throw off all of the stupid facades and all of the shows and all that and just, you know, if people accept you, they do, and if they don't, they don't, but you are what you are and you must be what you are, but more importantly, you are that so that you might be that exact channel that he wanted when he made you. A channel of this. When you get up there, who knows, you know, maybe you'll say, Randy, you know, you're such a naughty boy. You're going to get ten straps for this, and I'm putting you in my son. Or what? You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, let's get on with it. You know. But my identification is Christ, because He is my life. Life. Okay. We say He is my life. That's a personal designation. Most of the time. But if we say He is life, because in Him is life, and I have to be in Him, so. He's my life. The Word declares it. The Father declares it. The plan settles it. That's the truth. Glory to God. And you have God hold of something that cannot be shook. Sure. Why? Because it is the same. It's the same when things are good and when they're not. It's the same when weather's hot and when it's cold. It's the same if you're tired or if you've got lots of energy. It's the same with if you're hungry or you're not hungry. It's the same if somebody treats you mean or if everybody's being nice to you. Because Christ 
really is your life and all of the personal defenses, you know, and this is this is what our little walls are, folks. We build these walls, they are based on personal defenses and personal, we mark off our territory and and, and our gods, and uh, okay, yeah, sure, you can have some of my drink, you know, and so we're both sipping off the same drink, uh, but don't, don't you touch my CD player. My CD because that's one of my little golden caps that I, you know, it's mine. Okay, now you know and I know, yes, there has to be responsibility and all that. But folks, you can be responsible in the Lord and not have personal designations that are marked off by all this self-centered concept of separateness. You can. Because now, you serve others as unto the Lord. You know, a little kid sitting there playing with a gun, and you can run over there and say, give me that gun, this is my gun. Or you can run over and grab it and say, you know, hurt yourself. It's all, it, it depends on what method you're working from. And if you come, if you're constantly coming from this, this reality that you have there, not, it's not a reality, I guess it is in the sense run, but it's, it's, to me it's a concept that, okay, I need life. I need to get the word. I need to find myself over here. You'll never, you're never going to do something to find that. You, <coughs> the great reality of how this begins to work is there's a letting, there's an acknowledging <coughs> of the truth. Uh, what is that? Philemon? Look at Philemon and Lydia. It's like, Philemon? Where is Philemon? I don't know, that's why I'm sitting through. It's after Titus, before Hebrews. It's just a little bit there. verse 4. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus, and toward all saints, that the fellowship of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. He just said it becomes effectual when you acknowledge it. There is my concept of acknowledging based on the concept of seven. My concept is, okay, I have to accept this is true. And so I set out to do something that proves that I have accepted this. Okay. Or there is a concept that truly understand and that has started to embrace this and said, hey man, he said I was there before and it even started. I was fearfully and wonderfully made. I mean, it's, I'm already there. Nothing I can do to believe my way into that. I'm already right there just because he said it. For me to believe it is no big feat. You know, it's like it's a little bit like me saying, Did you know that you're in this room? And you go, Oh, okay, and you said about to believe that. You know, when you are in this room. And for you to believe you're in this room is no great spiritual movement. Or acting. Hey, guess what? Your body's in this room, and you're in Christ. For you to believe that is nothing more than an acknowledgement of the truth. Okay, that's where I am. You said it. I don't go by my mind. I don't go by me. I don't go by you. I'm not second. Why should I go by my mind? What I think, what I can figure out over this thing, because I can't figure it out anyway. So, what you say is my truth. You are my God. You are my Father. Jesus, you are my Lord. See, I mean, okay. And you're saying, okay, cool. I'm in Christ. No, you're not. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, see? Word says, it didn't change. You do something wrong. Gosh, but you know what? I'm still there. God put me there. God put me there, not just at the cross right here in the beginning. And it was settled as far as it is. If you understand this thing about Abraham and Isaac, 
how it got settled before it happened, if you understand that that's the way God is, you will understand this. If you don't, and you have a hard time with that, then it's not going to be as clear. But once you get that settled in your heart, that, that with Him, it doesn't have to come to pass to be. When He said it's done, that's it. It's done. I'm in Christ. And sure enough, I am in Christ. I didn't do anything to deserve it. I just believed it. And it, apparently, the way I got in there, and all that is mine must be a process of what we call grace. So the only thing left for me to do is to exercise faith. So it's almost like this whole thing is by grace through faith. I don't know, it's weird. So what is the big striving here? Somebody will tell me. <laughs> well, we want to make it true in us. Yes. Which, which, which automatically is a concept of seven. So we want to make it, she said, we want to make it true in us, which automatically starts from our method, a concept of seven. You see what I'm saying? The real problem isn't what we want to do or whatever. It is the concept of seven. That's the real problem. When you start from that point, you cannot reach this from there. You ever heard what I'm saying? You can't get there from here. You cannot get over here in the beginning from this concept of seven, which you can't. I mean, I'm telling you, all the striving, all the fasting, all the prayer, all the Bible reading, all the, you know, crawling upstairs on your knees, you know, or whatever, whipping and beating yourself as you go, nothing can accomplish what is, nothing can accomplish what is already accomplished. But it was not accomplished in you for you as a separate entity. It was accomplished in His Son. In Him was life, not in you. Now, one of these days, we'll get into this fact that there was a separateness and there was a fusion, if you will. You were joined to the vine and the branches. But then, if you consider the truth, really, the fusion was between you physically and your personality joined with God, which had never been joined. But the oneness of the union, the union that is really there, is that the life that was already flowing in the vine and has always been, ends up being in you. That's the fruit there. That's the substance that brings, that makes fruit. The life that was in the vine way before you were ever joined in. And all you did was get that in you. When you got that in you, the substance that brings forth fruit will bring forth fruit. Do you believe that? I did. And my biggest struggle, I'll close with this, my biggest struggle was that I believe that so wholeheartedly I'll never forget it. Oh God, I would just I would just hear that I I read something and we'd go, you know, Jesus is the only one, you know, and I would my question would be, I believe my statement would be first, I believe that Jesus is the only one that can do this and bring forth to me. My question is, how do I get that in? That was always my question. And the way I finally worked the thing out was I found out I was already here, had been there even before I existed, that this was a settled condition. And once I received the Lord, then it was certainly released in time. And it was just a matter of time. As long as I wasn't by works of the law trying to perform what he can only do, then it's just a matter of time. I, you know, he just kind of gave me one commandment, abide and believe. Well, anything, anything that came contrary to that, the challenge, the word of God, was cast out. Anything that challenged the knowledge of the word came against the knowledge of the word was cast out. I didn't, you know, I didn't tend it, I didn't consider it, I didn't hug it, kiss it. Say, oh, you're probably true, and I probably don't have it because I such a big thing. Word of God is true, God's true. The truth ain't gonna get any more true than what it is. If if all it is is one day I'm gonna believe it, why not believe it now? Hello. I mean that's what I saw. 
And so it just, to me, something just went, and I went, okay. And I, I, I embraced the union and said, that's it, okay. Glory to God. Okay. And then, you know what, when you embrace that and you really say that, then you start reading and you get, you get new eyes. The, the Bible becomes a new book. Really, you start saying, oh, whoa. You know, this thing, I'm, you know, and you don't, it's not this separateness that the, the Pharisees, the scriptures, the law is condemning you all the time. You're, oh, I don't know. You know? Well, I don't know if you got anything out of this or not, but I will say that uh, there's a little bit of truth back in the Christ. If you care to. Go back and read this to the table or whatever. If there's probably enough there that can keep you busy for you know, a day or two, maybe a couple So you might consider uh, savoring. Don't don't get the tape. Listen to the whole thing. Get home get, get the tape. Listen to it a little bit. Stop the tape. Meditate on that until the Holy Spirit lifts off. Something, something goes, whoa, whoa, like this, whoa. Stop the tape, write it down, start thinking about it, hold it before the Lord. Don't try to figure it out. Just hold it before the Lord. And when the Holy Spirit eventually lifts off of that, start the tape. Stop it. Chew on that, say, pretty soon what will happen is you won't need. You know, this is true. Remember, remember when we started this class, and I said that you could, you could, uh, in one scripture, you could find everything in the whole Bible because it's like an atom that is really a, like a cell in your body is the DNA of your whole being. You know what I mean? Um, you could quit getting 80 million classes and shoving stuff down your throat and all this stuff, and you could just concentrate on just one thing end up with more than you can get from trying to shove a bunch of stuff down your throat. So, you know, a bunch of us saying, good, I'm not going to have all these classes. I'm just going to sit down with a day. <laughs> One day. The rest of my life. You don't need the body. You can do the concept of separateness. But, uh, but the truth that I'm trying to, that I'm trying to get across is about but there's enough in this class right here that can change your life. You don't need a bunch of, you don't need a wide variety. You just need to get something. something. You need to stop and say, oh, I won't get this. And I Oh, we just praise you for your goodness. Thank you for the Spirit of God. You guide this in all the truth. Thank you for the hungry hearts that are there. You must be open before the Spirit of God will move, for He does not cast His pearls before swine. We not so clearly and delicately lay out the truth. Unless there was open channels, receptive to the others. Thank you, Father.